As with any project, good quality workmanship comes in the planning stages. We've taken the time for the 100 amp residential service project to assemble and lay out all of the parts, materials and tools that we're going to need in advance, starting with the very beginning of the project and moving on all the way through to its finish. We begin at the meter base to the service L and conduit going through the exterior wall inside the house to the panel board. Our first mass support. We've also taken the time to prefabricate some soffit blocking for other mass supports. In this case, we're going to be using U-bolts. All the way to the mast, the roof flashing, the weatherhead, the Emily knob. We have some specialty tools we may require, so we've taken the time to put them aside as well, including a torque wrench and some cable cutters. Looks like we're ready to begin construction. Tom's removing the knockouts of the meter base. Uh, this can be a, a difficult task if you're not careful. Remember that this is done in sped up time, not real time. Take your time to make sure that you don't remove any unwanted sections or rings from the knockout. We're securing the meter base. Remember to use washers to hold it in place securely, firmly, and all four corners must be supported. Once the meter base is in place, we're going to install our first mass support. There's a pilot hole for the bolt to fit through, but the key with this is that we're going to need to recess the bolt heads in order for it to sit flush. Once the initial work down below is done, we're going to begin with the soffit blocking. Those are our prefabbed blocks, and we're going to install them first. But we're not going to finish the soffit blocking until we've got the mast in place. I'm just putting a small pilot hole through for location of the mast. This can be found using a four foot level, but ideally having a laser level will get you an exact location. Once the preliminary blocks are in, we can go up onto the roof. Here I'm just installing a small support to protect the shingling from our ladder. This couldn't be done if the fascia board was finished, so it's best to try and get in there to do the work above before the finish is on the fascia. Tom's laying out the flashing here. He's going to have to slide it underneath and do some trimming. Be careful with your knife when cutting through the shingling. It can take a bit of effort to cut through it and you don't want to slip. Remember that working at heights you want to secure all components where your tool pouch for your tools and find some way of preventing your other tools and components from falling off. Yep. Using a little piece of mast, Tom's going to trace the hole he requires in the correct location.
Tom's going to use a saw saw here to remove the wood so we can get the mass through. Using a hole saw would be just fine, but either way you have to remember that you're cutting or drilling on an angle and you're going to be required to clean up the inside edge to make sure that it's that your mass comes through perfectly straight. Double check to ensure the correct diameter and then perform any necessary cleanup. Once the flashing has been inserted and secured underneath the shingles, we can install the mast. Exercise a little caution when putting the rubber seal around the mast. It can take quite a bit of force to get it down where you need it to be and you don't want to slide off the ladder. With everything above in place, we can work on the service elbow. Here we're laying out the correct location for the hole and we're going to use a hole saw to drill through. Remember, larger diameters require slower speeds. Once the service cell and raceway are in place, we're going to need to put a bit of blocking in there to ensure that everything sits square. Ultimately, the homeowner's finish on the house will dictate what we require for support. After everything's been tightened up and secured, we're going to move up top and finish up our soffit blocking. Now we're installing our two soffit U-bolts. The top one goes in the existing block and then we're going to custom fit the remainder of the blocking to our mast. There are a number of ways that this can be done but Tom and I opted to choose this design of blocking because we feel it provides a significant quantity of support from the weight of the conductors pulling on the mast and all of that force is being directed into the trusses. Once the blocking is all complete, we can insert our service conductors and then move on to termination at the meter base. It's important to recognize that the meter base will have torque ratings on all of its lugs. Check for the stamps or on the sticker on the side of the base and ensure that all of your terminations are done to the rated spec. When stripping the insulation off of individual conductors, pencil the ends and be careful not to nick the copper. When inserting the conductor into the lug, you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of copper showing on either side of the lug. So anyone who inspects can verify 
that adequate termination has been made. After the conductors are formed and tightened down, just want to give everything one last check, a little tug test to ensure that you haven't missed anything and that everything is secure. Once that's done, we can move on and put the remainder of the conductors in toward our panel through the service L. It's important to remember that adequate communication is going to be required here so that nobody's fingers get caught and that no damage is done to the conductor insulation. Further, there may be occasion where you're going to be required to upsize the service elbow in order to adequately protect the insulation. Remember to reference the code for all situations. Once the conductors are in place, we need to seal up the outside openings to prevent moisture from entering the building. I like to do this after the terminations at the panel are done as well. Now we can close up the meter base, putting its cover on, as well as the security ring. It takes a little bit of pressure to get the security ring in place. Eventually, the supply authority will remove the ring, install the meter, replace the ring, and add a seal. Final steps will include the addition of the service insulator and the weather head. Again, referencing all applicable code rules for distance and height. When installing the weather head, it's important to remember to keep all separate pieces under control when working at height to prevent any injuries or accidents from happening. And here we've decided to install both the insulator and the weather head at 90 degrees. But in reality, the angle of the placement of both weather head and insulator would be dictated by the relative position to the pole. Tom had to form the conductors a little bit in order to get the bushing in. However, many supply authorities are not going to want you to form the drip loops. Once everything's installed and tightened down, we'll have to do one final check to ensure that all of our 
code distances have been met, and this installation will be complete.